everybody welcome back today's presentation is the evolution of religious beliefs and it's fascinating it's super condensed because if we we're really going to dive deep into this we need about 10,000 hours and this topic can be really offensive to a lot of people and this presentation is not designed in any way to disparage any religion it's just discussing how things have evolved and how fascinating it actually is and so if you're a hindu buddhist christian whatever I'm not disparaging any of those this is just fun stuff that i believe as humans and no matter what our spiritual or religious beliefs or practices it's good to know ourselves and part of knowing ourselves is to know history and it's really fun it's something a little different because normally we talk about issues and tools that are available to us to elevate our spirit to help elevate ones around us and to connect and meditate the best way we know how but this is a little different today so we're going to start the whole evolution of things you know it's the the ancients believed and so many different things and primarily they worship like animals and the stars and the sky which you know kind of makes sense right you're outside all the time and i saw this picture of, of these aborigines and i thought it was interesting that the pope and them wear similar hats and we're going to kind of touch on that some but i think if we were to understand our societal norms from spiritual financial uh, all aspects of our life and the societies that we live in, it is really important for us to be able to navigate into the future by understanding the past. I think it's critical. Yeah. Super critical. And this is kind of cool. This is an ancient Celtic example. They've, they've discovered just tons of these things. And I think it is, just like I said, it's understandable that, that we have lost our connection to nature because we, you know, we're inside this building. We are, most people don't take their shoes off and go walk barefoot in the grass. Most people don't know about earthing, which we have talked about here. Most people have just separated themselves from nature and we are nature. And I think it's fascinating that uh, we've allowed ourselves to separate from uh, the Native American Indians and they're super, spiritual connection to mother earth i think we're we've, we've lost something and but a lot of what we've been taught most of y'all can remember being in grade school and you know civilization started about five or six thousand years ago we were told and in recent times i mean in the past 10 15 years we have totally discovered that that is not true at all we found places like gobekli tepe this place right here in turkey and several other ones around them. This place is fascinating. You can't hardly tell here, but these people purposefully filled in, and this is a massive site, like it's huge. They purposefully filled it in to protect it from something. And nobody knows what. But we know for a fact that it's 11,000 years old. And if you go up and just look, you know, at this time, we're think, we were told that they're just hunter-gatherers. Hunter-gatherers don't make perfect cuts and beautiful engravings without some kind of very specialized tool. And that just rewrites all of our known history. And it's fascinating to me. I, I don't know why we don't talk about this a lot more. We don't talk about this a lot either. We have pyramids. Did y'all know that we have pyramids all over the world? Like everywhere? Like there's no place on the planet where we don't have tons of pyramids. They are everywhere, all over China, all over India. They're all over Mexico, especially Mexico and Guatemala and Central and South America. It's amazing. We have them everywhere. And I find this fascinating too. Do you know that there's places in the Grand Canyon that are off limits to people? like massive areas of the Grand Canyon that you cannot go to. And they will not give you an explanation why. But there are some really cool things in the Grand Canyon. They're perfect pyramids and they're large. 
they're massive structures where people have snuck in their drones and done all sorts of really cool exploration. I just wonder why that, that's the case. And we have pyramids all over the North American continent. We have thousands of them. And I think of, uh, if y'all don't know who Graham Hancock is, I strongly suggest y'all look him up because he says, and I agree with him, that we are a civilization, we are humanity that is, has amnesia. We have lost ourselves. We don't know who we really are. And I agree with that to a large measure. And then, this is one of the best slides ever, is uh, this is in Tikal in Guatemala, and that's Jill trekking through the uh, jungles of Guatemala. And no trip to a temple would be, it just wouldn't make any sense if you weren't smoking a spiritual cigar in the Mayan ruins. <laughs> it just wouldn't make any sense if you didn't do that. But this is what I find fascinating. Like, and there's some more in, underneath the uh, Florida coast. And then, this is just one example of a series of pyramids and they perfectly align, but this happens quite a lot. So if we were actually to draw all the lines, there are a massive amount of ley lines where these things are connecting worldwide. And scientists have also discovered in, in just about every one of these places, especially uh, Freddie Silva's work, of how they test the energetic pull of these places. It's massive. Like there's a massive amount of energy. You can go to these places and feel rejuvenated. It does something to your system. It's, it's beautiful to me. And if we look at ancient Mesopotamia, this is, our, this is Iraq. And when we were bombing Iraq, you know, back with old Bushy Boy, I thought, of course, we're going there for oil. I think most people thought that as well. But I also had the thought of, we sure are destroying a lot of our ancient history. There's a, because the, there's not a whole lot of archeology span going on there. I've got a lot of buddies that have been to Iraq and a lot of special forces and Navy SEAL buddies that have been there. And they just say it is filled all over the place with just ruins and beautiful sculptures and just all these things all around the outskirts and everywhere they would go. And, so why destroy all that? It, it seemed weird to me, and I can't put my finger on it, really. But what is really cool about this is that the people of the time wrote in these cuneiforms. And it's not like they were just had, a, had some stone, and they melted it, you know, like clay, and they're starting to scribble on it, and it's all just a cluster of drawings. I mean, this is intricate, beautiful writing. And why would you take the time to write on that kind of stuff that way? Because they want it to last. Because you can take a fine piece of paper, parchment, and it's going to be gone. I mean, it's just gone. Unless it's really good and really preserved, it's not going to last. It's fascinating. And these guys, in the Sumerian text, in the cuneiforms, they start talking about these gods that came from the sky. In spaceships. I mean, they, they clearly are talking about it in big ways. I find that fascinating. I can't imagine Ricky taking the time to write beautifully on a cuneiform tablet about things that he's seeing from the sky. Like, why? Why? I don't know. I can't figure it out. A lot of people don't believe in UFOs, and I don't know what I believe really about that. But I just know that there's a lot of people that for some reason went way out of their way to make sure humanity knew about these things. And what's really odd to me is the same story that is in the cuneiform tablets is also in Genesis. Strange, because they're, they clearly say, you know, if you think of the Bible as a uh, more of a history book, which once again, that offends people, but if you think of it in just that way, is, are there morsels of history in there? Well, the gods of men had sex, or the sons of God had sex with the daughters of men. That's what it says in Genesis chapter 6. Well, who are these sons of God and why are they having sex with the daughters of men? They clearly are talking, they create the Nephilim and they have this new race. It's clearly talked about in the Bible. Anybody can go read it. It's fascinating that the story completely parallels one written thousands of years before. And it's just not that one. But this is really cool stuff to me. Like, I find this so fascinating. And how about the Egyptians? You know, as time goes on, you know, a few thousand years later, 
we're told that the Egyptians built these pyramids right about the time Moses is leaving in the Exodus. They're leaving. It's a big deal. You would think if they're building those pyramids in Cairo, that they would have been mentioned in some of that. It's not. It's not mentioned anywhere. They did say the British Museum, I think it was the British Museum, said that they, they found a journal of one of the workers. I have a little difficult time with that one, but um, it is what it is. I, I don't understand. I think they're much older than what we've been told. And is it a tomb or an energy device? You have serious scholars that say that is, the, all these pyramids worldwide are, gener are generators. They create energy. And then energy for what? Like, do, do, does somebody know something that we don't know from all these mystery sects, all these... Uh, it, we're going to touch on that. But, it, but what is it? And how can honest scientists have critical debates on whether or not that was a tomb or an energy device. I think it's fascinating. Now this would probably really piss off some people, so if it does, you, know, you, don't, you don't have to watch. I think it's fascinating. Because when we say amen after a prayer, we are saying aman, aman ra. We are not saying amen to the God that we think we are saying it to for 3,000 years before Jesus, it was a practice for everybody who prayed practically that you end your prayer with Amen. And then, modern day apologists for this will say, well, in the New Testament, it is written several times that we say Amen after a prayer. And so they attempt to say we didn't get that from there. <laughs> to me, I don't care what your argument is. If, if the whole world practically is saying amen for 3,000 years, and then all of a sudden uh, Christians adopt that same thing and carry it forward for another 2,000 years, it's probably a really good bet you got it from that. It just is. And that shouldn't piss anybody off. But I know it does because I've talked to some really serious um uh, Christians that find that the most offensive thing ever. And I really don't understand why. Because that's not bashing Christianity or any other, any other prayer. It's just, shouldn't we know what we're doing? Shouldn't we know? I think we should. I think we should know. This to me is awesome. Does this look familiar, anybody? <laughs> like, this is, these are some of these gods that we have taken, and these are symbols that are all around us. They are everywhere, and most nobody ever notices. Like, this is Isis, and not the terror group. But that's Isis. And she has her, her heir, her son, Horus, and Horus goes on to be, he's the son of God, he's a healer, he's from the sky and heavens, he's celebrated for death and resurrection. All of these things, but we have this ISIS everywhere. That's our Statue of Liberty, our Statue of Liberty, our Statue of Liberty. And look, for thousands of years before our Statue of Liberty, we have the same thing. We have these goddesses that are right in front of our face that continue to be promoted and pushed. So what are we actually looking at? Are we looking at the Statue of Liberty or are we looking at the goddess Ishtar and ISIS? or the Persian sun goddess, which all tie into Isis. I don't know, it's just a question to ponder. Aren't we here to think? Aren't we here to use our mind and to see what is right in front of our face? I think the answer is absolutely yes. These guys crack me up with these Pope hats. Like, I don't understand it. You know, they're just, they're everywhere. So you have Horus in the winter solstice. This is a common theme that goes on, predates all the way to the Sumerians, where all of these hundreds of gods, they all are born or die somewhere around Christmas. They all have three days of being dead, and they all resurrect later. Hundreds of them. Primarily about 30 really well-known ones. And he is depicted, y'all have seen Horus. Anytime you've ever seen anything on Egypt or Greece, you've seen Horus, the bird-headed dude. Well, they did that because they depicted him because he was flying. He was a god of the sky. 
he came down from the heavens. And when I started noticing this particular thing, it really made me want to do deep, deep dives into this. Because I wasn't taught this when I went to Catholic school, and I wasn't taught this when I went to Baptist school, and I wasn't taught it when I went to Pentecostal church. But when I started reading on my own, and I started to see all these gods like Zeus, Mount Olympus, where the Olympic Games come from, and Apollo, all the other Horus, all of them, they all are depicted just like this, with a big sun right behind all of their heads. All of them. And then we do the same thing with Jesus. And I, to me, this is just my personal opinion. Whether, and I'm not going to tell you my belief on this or not, but whether Jesus is real or not real, it is obvious it is a complete copy of what has happened before. He was very similar indeed. No matter what your belief system, you cannot argue with any credibility and say that those stories were not taken because I think there were nefarious reasons for doing that. And if you really study these things, it's a great way for people to steal our spirituality. It is a great way for people to control us and what we do and what we think and how we act. I believe that to be 100% true. Render under Caesar what is Caesar's. Uh, that's a scribe working for the government. And how about Rome? You know, we worship gods such as Jupiter, Venus, Mars. There are a lot of credible historians that actually believe Vespasian, the Flavian ruler in Rome, was actually Jesus. And that's hotly debated. I mean, you have both sides hate each other going at it and just bashing each other all day long. Who knows? But they both are said to have done miracles, all the same exact things. Jesus did all of the water to wine, healing people, and so supposedly did Vespasian at the exact same time. It's just so many strange things that I just was never told, and I wish that I would have been told because it would make me think. I don't know what it would have made me think. I just would have liked to have been aware of it at a much earlier age. Now, how about the people in the East? What's different about them? And when the East, Middle East, Asia, China, India, you know, they started about 35, 5,000 years ago, and the Hindus did, and nobody really knows exactly when. But we get our word karma from there, and we use karma a little incorrectly. You know, like if me and you accidentally got into a fight and I said something nasty to you, and then next week all of a sudden I fall down and break my leg, you know, you'd be like, oh, karma just got him. Uh, but in Hindu terms, it is, they're breaking the cycle of rebirth. Uh, whatever happens in this life, you're going to have to pay for it in your next life. So it's not like instant karma like we associate with it now. But I love the word karma and I use it all the time. But they gave us the possibility of liberation and release. It's very similar to the West here with the cycle of birth and death and resurrection in the same sort of way. But I was told when I went to Catholic and Baptist schools that we should never do that and all those people are all going to hell. My God was told that, they're going to hell. And I've been to India and those are some of the most beautiful, wonderful people ever. Every time you meet somebody, it's always namaste. They're beautiful. I don't think they're going to hell. I think that, I think that actually makes me disturbed and it creates separation. But do you find something interesting in their Lord their Lord Shiva, I'm not Shiva, uh, Krishna. Same thing. They're depicted everywhere, just like Jesus and all of the other gods with the big sun behind them. And for some reason, they even wear this Pope hat. Like, what are they doing with this Pope hat? <laughs> I still can't figure it out. And, and you could spend you know, thousands of hours reading and studying and, and, and come up with a million different answers. But their, their belief system is so similar to ours. It's just so similar. And how about Buddhists? Buddhists do the same thing. They do the same thing with the whole sun. It is found, it, uh, I love Buddha. You know, Buddha, you be self-aware. Just be self-aware. Practice meditation. Practice. Practice knowing yourself. And he mainly taught that nothing is permanent. 
And the best way, the best way to enter peace is to have a spiritual practice. And I think that is a fantastic idea. And I think that's a little bit what Jesus says, and it's a little bit what Krishna says, and it's a little bit what all of them say. I think we can take nuggets from just about anywhere to make our life better spiritually, financially, and our relationships and everything. But if y'all don't know this or never heard of Zoroastrianism, this is where all religions basically stem from outside of the Sumerian text. This was the first one God religion. And all of them had a massive, I mean, the three major Abrahamic religions, they pulled just about everything from this group. And it's fantastic. And Zoroastrianism, you know, he disappeared like Jesus did and healed people, raised from the dead. The same, the same whole thing. And of course, he flew around from the heavens. And this is, you know, thousands of years before Jesus, and this guy still has a Pope hat. <laughs> what, are, what are they doing with these Pope hats? It's crazy. And how about Zoroastria and Mithra? Like, they were the Last Supper's thousands of years before we think of the Last Supper now. I mean, these are carved into stone that have been dated thousands of years before Christianity. It seems like we would ask ourselves, what in the hell is going on here? Like, like just what? Like, no matter if you're a diehard Catholic or Baptist or Pentecostal or whatever, wouldn't you just scratch your head and go, man, I would like to learn more about that. I would like to know if that solidifies my belief system or makes me question and then find answers on my own and grow and become more spiritual and either cement more into that or not. But if you're never told, you're just never told. It's weird. Why weren't we told that the Last Supper was from Mithra thousands of years before, before the uh, our Last Supper that we know now? Strange. So Christianity is born 1900 years ago about, and it's really fascinating because we really could have thousands of hours of documentaries and tens of thousands of hours reading to learn everything that scholars debate. And then you'd have to question, is it really worth knowing all that in the first place? <laughs> it's like, do I need to know it all? I mean, but what is what fascinated me in, in my path and journey along spirituality was the Gnostics versus the Catholics. Like that's what started Christianity. You had the Gnostics who were very spiritualist. They didn't believe that you needed a middleman to get to God. And then you have the Catholics who say you're going to use us and our authority and the full force of the Roman Empire or <laughs> you're dead. <laughs> and it was pretty easy for the Romans to, uh, to make everybody Christian. And it was pretty easy for the Spanish and the Spanish Inquisition. And when they came over here to Central and South America, that's why they all speak Spanish. That's why everybody, most everybody in Central and South America are Christians, because you either were a Christian or you're dead. That's a fact, whether you like it or not. So Western civilization stole their spirituality and their connection to earth and replaced it with that. And I'm not saying that is good or bad, but I am saying that if you take somebody's spirituality and well, what was good for them for so long and you force them into something else, I don't believe forcing anybody into anything is a good idea, ever. I think it's a bad idea. So the spirituality side lost. And then of course, as we know over time, all the infighting with Christians created the 40,000 different Christian denominations because ultimately people couldn't get along and figure out what any of that meant. And to give you an example of how the Catholic Church still does that, and I'm not bashing Catholic Church, I just think it's kind of strange, but even up until recently, and I think even Bonnie would find this fascinating, Mount Graham is a very spiritual site in Arizona. And along with the Catholic Church and the University of Arizona, they kicked all these Native Americans off of their, their home, their ritual praying site, so they could build that big telescope that the Catholic Church named Lucifer. And then they got the nice little 
you know, the large bottom, blah, blah, blah. It's uh, like, what are you doing? Like, you're you just trying to make it like weird for people. <laughs> like, it's like they're on purpose trying to go, uh, yeah, we're being weird. Like, I don't get it. It's really strange. But this is something that has been done primarily with Catholics, but, I'm, but many other churches, primarily Catholics, have, if you go look at all these beautiful cathedrals and beautiful basilicas and these churches that are phenomenally awesome, most of them are built on top of what we would consider pagan places. And that's just a fact. And then we expropriate, or they expropriated, a lot of those religious, uh, their religious beliefs, because it was easier to convert them. It's easier to have somebody, if they don't have to change up their traditions, if they don't have to change up their Passovers or their Easters or their Christmas, their celebrations, it's easier to make them go, you follow us so we can better control and maneuver these masses the way we want to. It's a lot easier to do it because you don't have to change. They're not changing much. These are traditions that have been going on for thousands of years, way before this time. But there is one thing they all most have in common, that there is some kind of supreme being. I don't think any the mind of man can comprehend what the supreme being is. I don't think it's possible. I don't think so. There are some stark similarities in every one of them that we should consider. Instead of people just going, hey, you don't believe exactly like I do, so you're just going to hell, or you're going to whatever. That's just so silly. It's so silly. Oh, you're a Republican. You're a Democrat. You're going to hell. You're going to hell. Like, it's, it's silly. It's silly. It's just silly. <laughs> So from Jesus until the present day, we have all sorts of mystery schools. If you've never heard of mystery schools, I highly encourage you to read the book by Manly P. Hall, The Secret Teachings of All Ages. It's phenomenal. There are just hundreds of mystery schools, from the Rosicrucians to the Theophysy, so even in modern day Freemasonry, it's everywhere that you have to have initiations and you have to continue to go along to learn more. And it's just fascinating. And it makes me think, what do we not know? You know, what do we not know about all these things? What is being kept from us? Why can't we go to places in the Grand Canyon? Why don't we get free reign to go underneath those beautiful cathedrals and see those other pagan uh, things to see what they were? Why can't we do that? Why can't we know? I don't know. I think that is why there is such a big growing spiritual movement all over the world here is because we know something's wrong. Like there's something not right. And, and, no, and nobody can actually put their finger on it. Whether it's in religions, whether it's politics, whether it's uh, nobody having enough money. Like there, there's all of these stresses that nobody seems to can touch. We kind of think about it, and then we'll say and do stuff that we fully don't know or understand, which creates bigger and more divides between people. It's really silly, I think. But one thing is for sure, and we've talked about it a lot, there are things in the spirituality movement that are just fact. I know that if I walk right up to Randall, all right, when you came out to my truck today, how many times have we noticed this? Good positive energy. My mood was elevated. I was in the middle of listening to an audio book. I was in a trance. And then bam, there's Randall. He smiles at me. And all of a sudden I smile. That energy is just like that. In the same way with all of us. It happens the same way whether or not Ricky's in a good mood or bad mood. Our energies affect each other. It happens everywhere. And the earth is a magnetic pull. It's everywhere. It's just energy like crazy. Just like the earthing documentary we watched a couple of weeks ago out here. How powerful it is to feel the energy of the earth. It just, it's scientifically proven to reduce inflammation. Like it's a big deal. Carrie Mullis, I pointed out many months ago, the inventor of the famous PCR test, who somehow magically died right as the scamdemic started. He says, uh, the PCR test, you can find anything in anybody. It makes you believe 
in Eastern philosophy that everything we ever need to know, all knowledge is inside of us. We don't need a book. We don't need a belief system. We just know we can sit quietly amongst ourselves and amongst our friends and meditate and have everything that we need. And he proved that. Every single thing. If you want to find any disease, you can find it. It's in everybody. If you want to find any single known thing in the universe, it's in the human body. And he proved it. That's fascinating. I like to think of it like this. Like there, there are a lot of scientists that say, you know, we can prove a lot of things. You just give us that one miracle. You just give us the one miracle. And I'm going to tell you that there is no higher being. That one miracle, something came from nothing. Something came from nothing. Some energy then also came from nothing. And then uh, all of this. My little pea brain can't wrap my head around that. I just can't wrap my head around it. How does something come from nothing? I don't know. How does my energy interact that's invisible? How do I look at Kevin and think, damn, I love that guy. Where did all that, where did it just magically appear? Hmm, I don't know. But I think at the end of the day, we can all say, and I think we should be able to say, that we should be good. We should help each other. We should elevate each other. We should search out answers. We should always ask questions about everything and everybody. If I'm going to be self-aware in my journey in life to learn how to be self-aware, shouldn't I ask, why do you believe that? Why'd you just read an article over here that instantly made you furious when you don't know all the sides when you could have also read this? Or why do you read this? Why do you instantly believe what that person or that thing told you, whether it's religion, politics, or anything else? If we don't do our homework and don't understand who and what we are, well, we're just going to die without ever knowing. I think it's unnecessary. I think we have to have gratitude. I think we have to have love and understanding and patience. As Jill says, I'm not known for patience. And that may be true, but I'm working on it. <laughs> I'm a work in progress, just as we all are. But we have to find love. We have to supersede all of these things. We shouldn't instantly look down on other people for certain, unless they're just bad character and they're intentionally trying to cause you harm. That's a whole different matter. That's a whole different thing. But we should have love and gratitude in our hearts and find a way to shrink our divides and not do silly things that further separate us. That person's dumb. That person's this. This person's that. It's just, you know, it's silly. If that resonates with you and you're in the local area, come join us. If it doesn't resonate with you, well, you don't have to watch. We'll see you next time. Love you guys.